Hey everyone, welcome to the online program of Amrita IAS Academy. My name is Sibi Joy, and as part of our monthly current affairs MCQs test, in this part, in this video, we'll be discussing the second part of the part four of June 2020 current affairs. So we finished the part one earlier. This is the part two of the video. We'll begin with question number thirteen. In context of golden langurs, consider the following statements. First statement: They are endemic to Assam. Second statement: They are listed in the Schedule One of the Indian Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. Three: They are classified as critically endangered as per IUCN conservation status. Choose the correct code: Option A, one and two only; Option B, two only; Option C, one and three only; and Option D, all of the above. So, taking into this account of golden langurs, you can definitely say they are listed in Schedule One of the Indian Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. So, you can say the second statement is absolutely right. If the second statement is right, let's remove Option C, which is one and three only. That is removed. We are left with Option Two. Then. They are classified as critically endangered as per IUCN conservation status. So, golden langurs do not come under the critically endangered list. How do I know this? When you are learning about your environment part as part of your static portion coverage in uh, in the syllabus, you will definitely know about the list of animals which come under critically endangered as per IUCN. And even though you may not be able to remember the majority of the, you may not be able to know all of them by heart. You will know whether an animal is critically endangered or not just if you. Uh, read through it, and definitely golden langurs do not form a part of the critically endangered list of IUCN. So you can be sure, very sure that the third statement is also absolutely wrong. Let's remove the third statement. You are eliminate option C, which is one and three only, which is already gone. Option D, which is all of the above. Now you are left with two options, which is one and two only, and option B, two only. So now we manage to make a fifty-fifty elimination. So it's either one and two only or option two, option B, which is two only. So they are endemic to Assam. Yes, it is a fact. We have to know that uh, golden langurs are actually endemic to Assam. So this is a fact which you may not be very aware about uh, in a general perspective. But when you learn about it, if you have read the newspapers over the few few months or few years, definitely you would have talked about it. Or even if you have uh, been covering the static portion of the environment part of the civil service preparation syllabus, you definitely would have also learned about the golden langur. Even if you don't know it, it's not a worry. Uh, don't worry about it. As we are going through this video, try to learn these points, try to learn these facts, and keep it inside your mind. Definitely, it will be helpful for your preparation. So, the correct answer would be option A, one and two only. Let's go for the explanation. The statement one is correct because G's golden langur, also known simply as the golden langur, is an old world monkey found in a small region of Western Assam, India, and in the neighboring foothills of the Black Mountains of Bhutan. Statement two is correct because it is listed in Schedule One of the Indian Wildlife Protection Act of 1972, and which grants it the highest level of protection in the country. Yet Vehicle hits, poachings, conflict with people, and habitat degradation continue to take a toll of the species in Bodo land. The third statement is not correct because while it is listed in Appendix One of the Sites and the Schedule One of the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972, G's low golden langur is currently endangered, not critically endangered, but rather it is endangered. With the current population trend is decreasing. Its total Indian population is just thousand five hundred individuals, so it's not critically endangered. It is just endangered. Let's keep that in mind. No, it's endemic to Assam also, and also present in Bhutan too. So that is the explanation for this question. Let's go for the next question. In context of Sansad Adarsh Gram Yojana or SAGI, consider the following statements. This rural development program focuses upon the development in the villages and social mobilization of the village community. Second statement under SAGI. A Lok Sabha member of Parliament has to choose a Gram Panchayat from within his or her constituency. Choose the correct code: option A, one and one only; option B, two only; option C, both one and two; and option D, none of the above. So, Sansad Adarsh Gram Yojana is a very famous flagship scheme of this government. So, keeping that into mind, looking at the word itself, Sansad Adarsh Gram, Adarsh Gram is model village. So, keeping that into mind, we can say this rural development program focuses upon development in villages and social mobilization of the village community. Definitely, this first statement matches with the uh, theme of the question, which is Sansad Adarsh Gram. So, that is also matched under S A G V or SAGI. A Lok Sabha member of Parliament, yes, Sansad means Parliament. A Lok Sabha member of Parliament has to choose a Gram Panchayat from his, within his or her constituency. Definitely, I find that answer to be logical. I find that statement to be logical because for Lok Sabha MP who was elected from his from a specific constituency, it would be highly better to choose a 
village mod as a model village from his or her constituency rather than choosing it from some other constituency because he has been chosen to represent that constituency and it is his responsibility or it is her responsibility to choose a village from that. So definitely I find that both of the statements seem highly logical and highly matching to the demand of the question. So definitely I would go with option C which is both 1 and 2. Let us look at the explanation. The answer is C. Sansad Adarsh Gram Yojana is a rural development program broadly focusing upon the development in the villages which include social development, cultural development and spread motivation among the people on social mobilization of the village community. The distinct feature of this yojana it is it's demand driven, it's inspired by society and it's based on people's participation. What about the second statement? The member of parliament will identify one gram panchayat. A Lok Sabha MP has to choose a gram panchayat from the same constituency with, to which he or she was elected. Whereas a Rajya Sabha MP can choose a gram panchayat from a rural area of a district of their choice, but it should be from the state from which they were elected. That is a Rajya Sabha MP, unlike the Lok Sabha MP, has the freedom to choose any rural uh, gram panchayat provided out of any district, provided it is in the same state from which they were elected. This has to be the condition which has to be taken for Rajya Sabha MP, whereas for Lok Sabha MP, they have to choose it from their own constituency. That is the only limitation to this uh, choosing a villages. That is all for this question. So that is the explanation for SAGY. We will go for the next question. Recently, the government has launched the Satyabama portal to promote research and development in the mining and mineral sector, curb the menace of illegal silt mining, promote self-reliance in automation, prevent the diversion of coal and minor minerals. So again, it's a ABCD type of question, a bit difficult to handle for someone who has zero idea about it. So in such cases, like I said, if you can make an intuitive gap of logic, leap of logic and find a connection between that, go for it. Or if you know about it, well and good. My position always try to be updated on your current affairs, always try to be updated on your newspapers, keep reading them and also look at certain videos like this which help you to find questions from them and you know uh, act as you know questions for you, model questions which can help you to remember these points more and more clearly. So definitely keep reading your newspaper. If you have read, definitely you will also know that the Satyabama portal aims to promote research and development in the mining and mineral sector. The correct answer would be option A. Let us look at the explanation. Shripalad Joshi. A union minister for coals, mines and parliamentary affairs launched the Satyabama. The explanation is given in the, in the, the full form is given in the explanation. Satyabama portal for science and technology program scheme of ministry of mines. It has been designed, developed and implemented by NIC and with an aim to promote research and develop, development in the mining and mineral sector. What does this portal do? It allows online submission of project proposals along with monitoring of the same projects and utilization of funds. It allows for online submission of project proposals along with monitoring and the researchers can also submit progress report and final technical reports of the projects in the electronic format. A user manual is also available on the portal where the stepwise procedures for submission of project proposals have been highlighted. The project, the portal is integrated with the NGO Darpan portal of a Niti Aayog. So please know that this portal, the Satyabama portal is integrated with the NGO Darpan portal of Niti Aayog. So that is for the explanation for this question. Let us go for the next question. Consider the following statements about the UN Arms Trade Treaty or the ATT. It is a multilateral treaty that regulates the international trade of conventional nuclear weapons. India has signed but refused to ratify this treaty. Select the correct answer using the given below code. Option A 1 only, option B 2 only, option C both 1 and 2 and option D none of the above. So taking looking at the statement, it is a multilateral treaty that regulates the international trade of conventional nuclear weapons. Conventional weapons which is being traded, yes acceptable. But nuclear weapons are not traded to, are not considered to be tradable goods, neither are they being traded on the international sphere. So whichever country has them has always kept them safe. Nobody is selling nuclear weapons to other countries. So definitely you can say the second part that is the nuclear, it is a treaty with, that regulates international trade of conventional nuclear weapons. Since the word nuclear weapons is there, definitely I would say the first statement is wrong. Remove that, you are left with only option 2. So you can say either it is option B, 2 only or option D, none of the above. That is India has signed but refused to ratify this treaty. But actually India has not signed any treaty like that. And uh, we can say that the correct answer is option D, none of the above. Let us look at the explanation. Option D, the answer is D, explanation is the ATT is a multilateral treaty that regulates the international trade in conventional weapons for the purpose of contributing to international regional peace, reducing human suffering and promoting cooperation, transparency and responsible action by and among states. It does not deal with nuclear weapons. Please get it clear that the UN ATT does not deal with nuclear weapons but rather only with conventional weaponry. 
The second statement is not correct because the UN General Assembly of 2nd April 2013 in its 71st plenary meeting adopted the HETS resolution by 154 to 3 vote with 23 abstentions. North Korea, Iran and Syria voted in opposition, whereas China and Russia among the world's leaders in weapon exports were among the 23 nations that abstained. Cuba, Indonesia, uh, India, Myanmar, Nicaragua, Saudi and Sudan also abstained, whereas Armenia, Dominican Republic, Venezuela and Vietnam did not vote. So India did not, India abstained, so did China and Russia and along with other certain countries too. So that is the explanation for this about the UNATT. I hope you all remember it. Let's go for the next question. Consider the following statements about the Jagannath Puri Rath Yatra. It, this is the only festival in the world where the deities are taken out of temples to travel to the devotees. Second, it is a part of both national list for in intangible cult cultural heritage and UNESCO's representative list of intangible cultural heritage. Which of the above mentioned statements are correct? So it's a very factual question. If you have any knowledge about the Jagannath Puri Rath Yatra, you will definitely know that in this festival, the deities are actually taken out of the temple and uh, shown to the devotees. So you can say the first statement is absolutely right. What about the second statement? Is it a part of the intangible cultural heritage national list and also the UNESCO's representative list of intangible cultural heritage? So taking both of them into account, you can say the second statement is wrong because it is not a part of that list. Rather, it is only, only the first statement is right. It is neither a part of the national list, neither a part of the UNESCO's list. So we look at the explanation. The answer is A. Statement 1 is correct because it is the only festival in the world where the deities are taken out of temples to travel to devotees and it is also the largest chariot procession in the world. The second statement is not correct because it is not a part of the national list for intangible cultural heritage nor of the UNESCO's representative, representative list of intangible cultural heritage. So that is for the explanation of this question. Let us look at the next question. In context of Directorate of Revenue Intelligence, DRI, consider the following statements. Let us look at the first statement. It is India's chief anti-smuggling intelligence investigation and operations agency. Second, it functions under the Ministry of Commerce. Third, it is not empowered to prevent the smuggling of wildlife and environmental products. Let us look at the correct code. Option A 1 and 2 only, option B 1 only, option C 1 and 3 only and option D all of the above. So, <coughs> so looking at this, let us take the main theme of this question. In context of Directorate of Revenue Intelligence, the key word we have to look at is revenue. So looking at the term of revenue, we will definitely link it with Finance Ministry. Look at the second statement. It functions under the Ministry of Commerce. So there seems to be a contradiction in that statement. So if we take Ministry of Finance and Ministry of Commerce, we take that contradiction into account, you can eliminate the second statement, which is if you eliminate that, you are left with just two options, which is option B, one only, and option C, one and three only, because option A and option D has the second statement as part of its options. So once that is removed, you are left with option B and C. Now we managed to make a 50-50 elimination. Let's look at uh, what else is left. Both of them have the option one in it, uh, statement one in it, which is it is India's chief anti-smuggling intelligence investigation operations agency. Yes, definitely first it seems right and seems logical according to the theme mentioned in the question. What about the third statement? It is not empowered to prevent the smuggling of wildlife and environmental products. A directorate of revenue intelligence definitely will have the power to prevent the smuggling in of wildlife and environmental products because that is also a part of the intelligence because many wildlife products are may be smuggled out of this country for monetary gains or for revenue purposes. So definitely the to say that the DRA does not have any role towards that seems highly illogical and it does not match with the demand or the theme of the question. So since taking that into account we can say that the option B seems to be the right answer because the third statement seems to be illogical. So we will go for the answer saying that our answer is option B which is one only. We will look at the explanation the answer is B. Statement 1 is correct because the DRI is the Indian Intelligence Agency which is India's chief anti-smuggling intelligence investigations and operations agency. The second statement is not correct because the Directorate of Revenue Intelligence functions under the Central Board of Indirect Taxes and Customs in the Department of Revenue under the Ministry of Finance in the Government of India. The third statement is also not current because it aims to secure India's national and economic security by preventing outright smuggling of contraband such as firearms, gold, narcotics, fake Indian currency notes, antiques, wildlife and environmental products also come under the ambit of the DRI. Moreover, it also works to prevent the proliferation of black money, 
commercial fraud and trade based money laundering. So these are all the major activities that come under the ambit of the Directorate of Revenue Intelligence. It works under the Ministry of Finance and it is India's Chief Anti-Smuggling Intelligence Investigations and Operations Agency. So that is all for this explanation. Let's look at the next one. In context of Garib Kalyan Rozgar Abhiyan, consider the following statements. It aims to provide lively opportunities in villages witnessing large number of returnee migrant workers affected by COVID-19. Second statement focuses on creating durable rural infrastructure and providing modern facilities like internet in the villages. Third statement, the Ministry of Finance is the nodal ministry for this campaign. Choose the correct answer. Option A, 1 and 2 only. Option B, 2 and 3 only. Option C, 1 and 3 only. And option D, all of the above. So this question talks about a specific scheme of the government known as the Garib Kalyan Rozgar Abhiyan. So uh, let's look at the third statement. You look at the third statement, it says the Ministry of Finance is the nodal ministry for this campaign quite possible but uh, this looks at majorly towards you know providing livelihood opportunities in villages and what does it focus on creating rural infrastructure so while the first two statements talk about building something better and we do need money for it the ministry of finance is not exactly the ministry that deals with you know infrastructural growth neither would it be re, uh, dealing towards you know poverty or something directly there are other ministries which are more focused towards it. So as to say the Ministry of Finance is the nodal ministry seems a bit impractical in this sense for this question. Whereas for the previous question, the Ministry of Finance is matching to it because the Directorate of Revenue Intelligence talks about money, revenue, the keyword itself is revenue which is mentioned as part of a, which can be linked to the Ministry of Finance. But here, it talks about development and infrastructure. While finance is needed for it, it may not be the Ministry of Finance which is di directly dealing with it. So I'd like to take that logic into account and I can say the third statement is wrong. Remove the third statement, you are just left with one option, option A, one and two only. Let's go for the explanation. The answer is A, explanation one. The Garib Kalyan Rozgar Abhiyan is a massive employment com come rural public works campaign which aims to empower and provide livelihood opportunities in areas, villages witnessing large number of returning migrant workers affected by the devastating COVID-19. What is the major objective? provide li li livelihood opportunity to returning migrants and other affected rural citizens, saturate villages with public infrastructure and create livelihood opportunities like roads, housings, anganwadis, panjayat bhavans, various livelihood assets and community complexes too. And such a vast variety of works will ensure that each migrant worker is able to get an opportunity of employment according to his skill in the coming 125 days so that they will have some job to do in their own villages. <coughs> this will also prepare for expansion development of livelihoods for a longer period too. This will act as a foundation towards that. So that is the idea behind Garib Kalyan Rozgar Abhiyan. So remember these points, uh, which ministry is dealing with it. Uh, the second statement focus on durable rural infrastructure and providing modern facilities. The third statement, it will be a convergent effort between 12 different ministries and departments, which are rural development, Panjaiti Raj, road transport, highways, mines, drinking water sanitation, environment, railways, petroleum and natural gas, new and renewable energy, border roads, telecom and agriculture, because they will be the ones implementing these 25 public infrastructure works. But it will be the Ministry of Rural Development, which is the nodal ministry for this campaign. And it will be implemented in close coordination with the state governments. It is not implemented just by the central government alone, but it is implemented by the Ministry of Rural Development in close coordination with the state governments. And the central nodal officers of the rank of Joint Secretary and above will be appointed to oversee the effective and timely implementation of these schemes too. So that is the explanation for this question. Let's go for the next question. The Ambubachi Mela, a Hindu festival which marks the annual menstruation of the presiding temple goddess is being celebrated annually in which of the following states? A. Assam, B. Rajasthan, C. Manipur and D. Kerala. So the Ambubachi Mela is a very famous festival. It was there in the news for uh, you know consistently over the past few weeks. So taking that into account and it's a very uh, specific festival. It has a female deity and it celebrates the menstruation of the presiding temple goddess. So taking these unique features into account, definitely there was, it was mentioned in many news articles over the past few weeks and months. So we, one specific thing you have to note down is it is an ABC type question. So unless you know it, you can go for it. In this case, if you know it, the answer is actually Assam. But otherwise, if you can make a leap of logic, go for Assam. Otherwise, you can just leave it. Even if you don't know it right now, don't worry. Listen to the explanation. Take in these points, imbibe it, keep it in your mind so that next time such a question comes, you will be able to handle it. Let's go for the explanation. The Ambubachi Mela is an annual Hindu Mela held at the Kamakya Temple in Guwahati, Assam. It is a celebration of the yearly menstruation course of Goddess Kamakya. 
It is believed that the presiding goddess of the temple, Devi Kamakya, the mother Shakti, goes through her annual cycle of menstruation during this time stretch. It is believed that during the monsoon rains, the creative and nurturing power of the menses of Mother Earth becomes accessible to devotees at this site during the Mela. So there is no idol of the presiding deity, but she is worshipped in the form of a yoni-like stone instead over which a natural spring flows. So there is no specific deity or shape of sculpture, just a yoni-like stone. It focuses upon the Devi Kamakya and its Dambubachi Mela is celebrated showing the annual cycle of menstruation of the goddess uh, Devi Kamakya and where is it based? It is actually in Guwati, Assam. So that is the explanation for the Ambubachi Mela question. Let's go for the next question. Consider the following statements about the Malabar rebellion. First one, it, is, it was a part of the Khilafat movement. Ali Musliar and Variam Kunnat Kunjam Ahmad Haji or VK Haji were the leaders of this movement. It ended with communal violence between Hindus and Muslims. So, Looking at these into account, you can say it was part of the Khilafat movement. Yes, the Malabar rebellion was a part of the Khilafat movement. And Ali Muzli and Variam Kunjah Kunjahamad Haji, VK Haji were also the leaders of this movement. And initially it came about as a part against the British uh, rule, but actually it ended with certain communal conflicts too. So taking this into account, it's a very specific question talking about a very specific rebellion which happened across a very specific part of India, which is in Kerala, especially the Malabar region. So it's a very difficult question for those who are not aware of it, but <coughs> it was actually over there, it was present in the news articles for the past few weeks. So taking into account, I would say the, uh, the answer is actually option D. L let's look at the explanation. The Mapla rebellion or the Malabar rebellion was part of the non-violent Khilafat movement led by Mahatma Gandhi and the Ali brothers in 1921-22. to 22. The second statement is also correct because the Mapla warriors under the leadership of the cleric Ali Musliar and Variam Kunnat Kunjamavad Haji, VK Haji captured the taluks of Eranad and Valovanad from the British and established their own rule. The third statement is also absolutely correct because the Malabar rebellion actually started as a resistance against the British colonial rule and the feudal system present in southern Malabar but ended in communal violence between Hindus and Muslims. So taking this into account, let's learn these three facts, let's learn these few points about the Malabar rebellion. It should definitely help for your UPSC exam. Let's look at the next question. Consider the following statements about Kathakali. This classical Indian dance form has originated in a village of Andhra Pradesh. Second, this dance form is based on religious legends and themes from the Puranas. Three, only Madalam is used as a musical instrument in Kathakali. Which of the above mentioned statements are correct? Option A, 1 and 2 only. Option B, 2 only. Option C, 1 and 3 only. And option D, all of the above. So, the main demand or the main theme of, the, theme, theme of this question is Kathakali. Let's look at the third statement. Only Madalam is used as a musical instrument in Kathakali. Madalam only, just one instrument. It may not be like that, there could be other instruments too. Since the uh, absolute directive word only is present, let's eliminate that option. Option C and option D are eliminated. What is left? Option A, 1 and 2 only and option B, 1 only. So automatically, uh, option A, 1 and 2 only and option B, 2 only. Automatically, option uh, the, the second statement becomes right. What about option 1 or the statement 1? This classical Indian dance form has originated in the village of Andhra Pradesh. No, Kathakali is actually originated in the state of Kerala. So taking that into account, you can say the first statement is also absolutely wrong. You are left with option B, 2 only. So if you have knowledge about Kathakali being originating just in Kerala, that knowledge alone will be able to get you the answer because if you eliminate option 1, you are left with just one statement which is option B, 2 only. So automatically your answer would become correct. So there are many techniques to reach an answer. I chose, showed you both of them. Let's use such techniques to clear your prelims and you find, uh, you know, find uh, answers for questions which you may not be really clear about. So let's look at the explanation. Statement 1 is not correct because Kathakali is a major form of classical Indian dance play. Classical Indian dance, it is a story play genre of art, but one distinguished by the co elaborately colorful makeup, costumes and face marks. Face masks that the traditionally male actor dancers wear. Kathakali is a Hindu performance art in the Malayalam speaking southwestern region of Kerala, India. Kuchipudi is also one of the 11 major Indian classical dances, has originated in the village named Kuchipudi in the Indian state of Andhra Pradesh. Kuchipudi has originated in Andhra Pradesh. The second statement is correct because themes of Kathakali are folk mythologies, religious legends and spiritual ideas from the Hindu epics and Puranas. The statement, third statement is not correct because many musical instruments are used in Kathakali. The three major drums are found. One is the madalam which is barrel shaped. The second is the chanda which is the cylindrical drum played with curved sticks. And the third is the itakya which is a hava glass shaped drum with muted and melodious notes played when the female characters performed. So these are the major drums. So you can definitely say it's not one single instrument being used. 
So, this is the explanation for this question. Let us go for the next question. In context of international comparison program, consider the following statements. It is the largest worldwide data collection initiative of the International Monetary Fund or the IMF. India has participated in almost all ICP around since its inception. It produces purchasing power parities and price level indices at PLI across economies. Choose the correct code. 1 and 2 only, option B 2 only, option C 2 and 3 only and option D all of the above. So, looking at this definitely you can say that <coughs> uh, the first statement, it is the largest worldwide data collection initiative of the IMF. So, it is not the IMF which is doing it, it is not the IMF which is doing it. So, ICP is actually a you know individual thing, so you can say it is not the IMF. And this question is actually a very highly technical question based upon a specific program known as the international comparison program. Uh, such questions are really hard to tackle. UPSC will throw such questions to you because uh, the idea is to make sure that you, even though you may not know the specific answer, let us try to at least eliminate certain options towards it. India has participated in almost all ICP rounds since its inception. Yes, it is quite possible. So, taking the second statement, India has participated in all ICP sessions? No. The statement itself says almost all. Quite possible India could have participated in almost all sessions. So, let us take option 2. But all the options are also correct. 2 also has is present across all the options. Let us look at the uh, third statement. It produces PPP, purchasing power parities and price level indices PLI across economies. Is it international comparison program per publishing that? Not necessarily. This is PPP and price level indices are, are, are the work of different organizations. It may not necessarily be the international comparison program. What is it? It is something about comparison. It does not produce any data. So, it, most probably they will be comparing data given from different resources. It does not produce certain data. Let us eliminate option 3, keeping that logic in mind. If you eliminate option 3, what you are left? You are left with option A 1 and 2 only and option B 2 only. Taking that into account, we are again left with two other options. It is either 1 and 2 or B 2 and 2 only or option C 2 and 3 only. So, it is a very difficult question comparatively compared to other questions. Now, I myself I am a bit confused to say whether this is uh, the first statement is right or wrong, but definitely I can say it is not a part of IMF. It is not a part of IMF because, because IMF more, looks more towards you know ensuring the monetary stability of the data. Now, how do I know about IMF? Uh, you will be learning about IMF as part of your economy static path syllabus. Uh, when you are preparing for your civil services exam. So, definitely you can say the first statement is wrong because IMF does not do this work. So, remove IMF you are left with just 2 only and 2 and 3 only. Second statement is right. Third statement it produces purchasing power parties and PLI across economies. Not necessarily it can it can do it, but I believe it may not be necessarily, but still uh, I am not willing to take a risk. Uh, I like to keep this option open. Uh, otherwise, usually I just say an answer, but in this case even I am confused. Let us keep it as option B and C. It is a 50-50 choice. We managed to eliminate it. So, you can I would go for option B or C either way or generally in such cases I may even leave the question because it is a highly technical question and I can almost find no logic to eliminate in this. So, let us look at the answer. The answer is actually C and the World Bank has released the new PPP for reference year 2017 under the international comparison program that adjusts for differences in the cost of living across economies of the world. Statement 1 is not correct because it is the world's largest worldwide data collection initiative under the guidance of not the IMF but the UN Statistical Commission. The second statement is correct because India has participated in almost all ICP rounds since its inception in 1970, which is the ministry dealing with it. It is the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation in India which is dealing with it. And uh, India is also a co-chair of the ICP governing board along with Statistics Australia, Austria for the ICP 2017 cycle. The third statement is also correct because ICP is also producing PPP which are vital for converting measures of economic activities to be comparable across economies. So, now you may ask like so what is a PPP, what is a PLI? So, these are topics you will be covering under your economy part of your syllabus. If I have to take it right now, I will have to go towards concepts of economy and we might be diverted from this program. So, just know it is a very technical question, uh, just learn the explanation. Definitely if you have any doubts, uh, you will be learning it as part of your static part of your economy syllabus. Let us look at the next question. In context of SATAT or SATAT scheme, consider the following statements. In this initiative is aimed at setting up of compressed biogas production plants and make it available in the markets for use in automotive fuels. Second statement, it is an initiative by the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. Third statement, it will help in waste management, reduction, carbon emissions and pollution. Choose the, choose the correct code. 
option a one and two only option b two only option c one and three only and option d all of the above so let's look at the first statement this initiative is aimed at setting up of compressed biogas production plants and make it available in the market for use in automotive fuels quite possible third statement to help in it will help in waste management reduction carbon emission pollution so generally we can say <coughs> this talks about something like biofuels or something but the second statement it is an initiative by ministry of new and renewable energy yes biofuels are a part of new and renewable energy but there is also another ministry which is also a part of this which is the ministry of oil and natural gas petroleum that ministry also has a role to play towards you know biogas production biofuel production so i'd like to say believe that it is that ministry which deals with biofuels or biodiesels and biopetrol so rather the ministry of new and renewable energy looks towards new resources like solar wind whereas it will be the ministry of you know uh, petroleum which would be dealing more towards this bio or compressed biogas production plants so i'd like to eliminate option 2 because it does not match with the demand of this question if you eliminate option 2 you are left with option uh, c only because all of the rest a b and d has option 2 in it or the statement 2 in it just keeping this in mind let's go for the explanation the answer is c which is option c 1 and 3 Sustainable Alternative Towards Affordable Transportation, SATAT is an initiative aimed at setting up of compressed biogas production, yes, and making it available in the market for use in automotive fuels. The statement 2 is not correct because it was launched by the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas and associated with PSUs like oil marketing companies which are IOC, BPCL and HPC. So you can say it is not by the Ministry of Renewable Energy, natural, New and Renewable Energy, but rather by the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas. The third statement is also correct because it has multiple benefits. It converts agriculture residue, cattle, dung and municipal solid waste into compressed biogas on a commercial scale. It results in responsible waste management, reduction carbon emissions pollution. It also gives additional revenue source for farmers. It boosts entrepreneurship, rural economy and environment. It helps to support the National Commission towards achieving climate change goals. Reduction in import of uh, you know, crude oil, gas, all that stuff. And it also acts as a buffer against crude oil or grass, uh, you know, price fluctuation. This program will actually help act as a buffer against too much fluctuation in the demand for crude oil or gas prices. So understand SATAT or SATAT is a flagship program of the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas. It aims to produce compressed biogas from uh, many agriculture waste and these are certain benefits which accrue because of this program. That is the idea behind it. Let's go for the next question. Recently, the government has launched the Yukti 2.0 platform to create a database of COVID positive patients, foster and promote innovation among students and teachers, brainstorm on possible solution of manual scavenging, tricks and techniques to treat oil spills. So it's an ABCD type of question. It's going to be really hard for us to, you know, uh, identify certain answers to it. So in such cases, uh, if you can make a leap of logic, go for it, hit it. If you cannot, Try to find something to find it or you can just leave it. So in this case, I've read about the Yukti 2.0 platform. It has been there in the news consistently for the past few weeks. It's definitely aims towards fostering and promoting innovation among the students and teachers. Or even in that case, just look at the term Yukti. Yukti and try to make a link between Yukti and all this. Creating a database of COVID positive patient does not match with the term Yukti. Brainstorm on possible solutions, yes, but it specifically talks about manual scavenging. So it does not have a term, you know, complete uh, match with Yukti 2.0. Tricks and techniques to treat oil spills, again, does not match completely with Yukti. But foster and promote innovation among students and teachers, yes, it is a part of rationality or Yukti. Matching that, you can say it's the option B, which is the correct answer. Let's look at the explanation. Union Minister of Human Resource Development, Sri Ramesh Pokhriyal Nishark, launched an initiative, Yukti 2.0 to help systematically assimilate technologies having commercial potential and uh, related to incubated startups in our higher education institutions. So what is Yukti 2.0? It is an online depository for innovative ideas which help promote innovation among uh, students and teachers. It is known as Yukti 2.0. It was initially promoted with the name Massive Indian Novelty De Depository or MIND. So initially it was known as MIND or Massive Indian Novelty Depository. And the AICTE Innovation Cell, it is the AICTE Innovation Cell which has created the Yukti 2.0 platform in which students across the country will be able to see all the innovations in this platform. And people, whether they are farmers, businessmen or other people in different parts can also access the portal, portal and also use innovations that, that, that are suitable and they can use it for themselves. 
so higher education institutions as well as teachers and students can put up their innovation and startup ideas on the platforms to commercialize it. So this platform is not just a database, it is also an online market where people can sell their ideas and buy their ideas and even coexist. So this will help for bringing in the gap between the innovative ideas and make these innovative ideas commercial by uh, getting prospective buyers to see them and thus we can bring about a link between innovation and commercialization. That is the idea behind the Yukti 2.0 platform. So uh, earlier the minister had launched the Yukti uh, portal on 11th April 2020 and the idea is to ensure that student teachers and researchers in higher educational institutions are getting appropriate support to meet the requirements to advance the technologies and innovations. That is the idea behind Yukti 2.0. So with this we are ending this session. So my name is CB Joy and thank you all for joining us as part of our online program of Amrita IAS Academy. Thank you. Yeah.